Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the Dell PowerEdge R750 server. In this video, we're gonna cover processors, but in the video series as a whole, we're gonna cover CPUs, RAM, drives, RAID, rails. We're gonna talk about how to update your iDRAC, how to install a supported operating system, plus a ton more. Click that like and smash that subscribe. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Today, it's a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R750 server. We always like to start the first video of our series with CPUs. We think it's the most important part to start with, so that's what we're going to begin with. So there are two CPUs inside. It's an LGA4189 socket, which means it takes Intel scalable third-gen processors, so that's going to be your silver 4300 series, your gold 5300 and 6300 series, your platinum 8300 series. These are going to be the third-gen scalable procs, and then the numbers will change after that, obviously, but that's how you'll be able to identify if it's a silver or if it's a gold or if it's a platinum. Uh, people ask all the time, hey, what CPUs do you recommend? And really, that kind of depends on your budget, your application. So we kind of break down into three categories. We have our low end, our value, and our high end. And so the low end is going to be uh, just like you think. It's going to be very budget friendly. It's not going to be the best, most robust spe uh, specs in the world, but it's still going to be really good specs. And it's going to be very budget friendly. Value is going to be that sweet spot that we're big fans of where you can get uh, still budget friendly. It's going to cost more than the low end, but it's going to be uh, better uh, procs as a whole, better specs as a whole, but they're not going to be the most robust or the latest and greatest, right? Whereas the high end is going to be the top of the line uh, processors for this series series and really all the ones we have are platinum uh, but those are going to be your various options and we've thrown up a chart here for you to look at you can pause it right now and there's plenty of other great options outside the ones we recommend these are just a few of the ones that we recommend all right, so what we're gonna show you now is how to remove your old processor and how to install a new one if you were interested in doing an upgrade. But before we do, I'm gonna grab my ESD gear and be right back. All right, have my ESD gear on. We're safe to handle our machine and work inside of it. So I always like to lay out everything that we're gonna use for our upgrade. So first things first, of course, the new CPU that we're gonna be upgrading with, we are gonna to need to remove the heat sink. So here is a T30 bit. It's not gonna be a regular Phillips head, it is a T30 bit. And then we are going to need a nice clean rag. And really we need this because the old heat sink or the heat sink is going to have old thermal paste on the bottom. I recommend cleaning that to the side so you don't accidentally uh, flake any of it off into open exposed pins. So just clean it to the side and you're going to want it clean before you install your new CPU and then the new thermal paste that we're going to put on top of it. So those are the four things that you're going to need. So let's go ahead and put everything to the side. We're going to lift our latch and take it off just like any other Dell server you've been in before. So you will notice that there is an air ba baffle or an air shroud on top. This is gonna be CPU one and CPU two. Very simple to remove this. You're just gonna lift it straight up. And for the sake of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the uh, air fan banks here just to give you a little bit extra view, but you really don't have to do this at home. That's just to give you all a little bit of extra uh, view and so it's really now just about grabbing your t30 bit and removing your heatsink and we'll start there hey this is mason with cloud ninjas and today i'm going to show you how to remove an old processor and install a new one into your dell power edge r750 server first things first when you look into your server you'll see that this is cpu one and this is cpu two when you look at your heatsink on cpu one there are latches at each corner you will need to push them inward and lift up to remove the cpu and heatsink from the motherboard First, let's grab our T30-bit screwdriver and begin unscrewing the heatsink from the motherboard. As you can see, I'm using a manual screwdriver as opposed to an electric one so that I can feel the heatsink coming off the motherboard. Typically, when we have large bulk orders and we need to build more servers quickly, we opt for the electric screwdriver, but we mainly use the manual one so that way we don't strip any screws. Once you have unscrewed the heatsink from the motherboard, you will now grab all four of these latches, push them inward, and pull straight up to remove the CPU and heatsink from the motherboard. Now we will remove the old processor from the heatsink. You would notice these pegs holding the CPU to the heatsink. This is a flexible piece of plastic, but do be careful to gently push the pegs up from each corner in order to safely remove the CPU from the heatsink. Now we are going to remove the CPU from the bracket. Like I said earlier, the bracket is flexible, but do be careful just to gently remove the processor from the bracket. Again, just a slight bend to the side and the processor should easily come off the bracket. Now, as you can see, we have this old thermal paste 
and we need to clean it off. So go ahead and grab your clean rag and begin cleaning off the old thermal paste. It's important to not clean old thermal paste over the motherboard. This is because we don't want any of it to flake off and go into the CPU pins or the motherboard and just make a mess. This will save you time in the long run. So just remember that when you clean the processor to do it to the side and you won't have any problems. Now we will do the same for the heat sink and clean off all this old thermal paste from it. And now we have a clean heat sink ready to take a new processor. All right, so in order to attach the CPU to the bracket, you will need to find the triangle on the bracket. Make sure it matches up with the triangle on the processor. Once you find where the triangles are going to match up, go ahead and gently bend the sides back and attach the processor to the bracket like so. Once we have the CPU attached to the bracket, we will just check to see if the processor is secured in place. And once you've done that, we can now move on to applying our thermal paste. So now we are going to just uncap our new tube of thermal paste and apply it to the processor. This may start a war in the comment section about how much thermal paste needs to be applied. You don't want to put too much or else it'll leak into the motherboard, and you don't want to put too little or else your processor may overheat. So really you just need a perfect balance of thermal paste applied to the CPU. Now that we have our thermal paste applied to our CPU, we can go ahead and attach our processor and bracket to the heatsink. This heatsink in particular has an indented corner located here. This is going to tell you where to line up the triangle on the bracket and the CPU to the heatsink. Make sure that they match up and go ahead and place the processor and bracket on the heatsink. Lining up the triangles with the indented corner and into each corner push in the peg so that way it secures the processor to the heatsink. There will be some tiny click sounds that you'll hear and that will let you know that the pegs are holding onto the heatsink. Go ahead, turn it over just to test to see if the bracket and CPU is properly attached to the heatsink. Alright, so now that our CPU is on the heatsink, we need to make sure that the indented side matches with the triangle that is on the motherboard. On this particular motherboard, the triangle is located in the back, so we just want to make sure that the triangles and indented corner match up with the triangle on the motherboard. Make sure that these metal latches are pushed inward. That way the heatsink can go all the way down the pegs. Once you've done that, you can push the latches outward and lock the heatsink in place. Go to each corner and make sure that the latches are pushed outward. And now you can go ahead and grab your T30 bit and screw the heatsink back to the motherboard. You've done it. Congratulations on installing your new processor for your Dell PowerEdge R750. Hey, do us a favor, hit that like button and smash the subscribe. If you're looking for any custom built Dell, HPE, Supermicro, AMD, Gigabyte, we do both new and refurbished. So give us a call or email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thanks for stopping by.